Hi Hopscotchers! Today we're going to make the escape game. Escape games are a big genre of games where you have to interact with your environment and find objects and clues in order to solve puzzles and escape the room. I'm going to show you how to make all the basic elements of an escape game, and from there you can add your own creativity and your own ideas to make a personalized escape game to challenge your friends. Let's start from the beginning. First, you'll need a door and a key, so let's go ahead and add those. Tap on the gray plus button at the bottom of the screen, and both door and key are emojis, so select text for text objects. Then to go to your emoji keyboard, tap the globe or smiley face button and scroll to find the door. I think door is just to the left here. There we go. And let's rename this text object by tapping the bolded text below and typing in door. Perfect. And now let's do the same for key. So tap on the gray plus button, select text, then key should be right next to door. There it is. And let's rename this key too. Cool. And I'm going to drag the key to the left over here and bring door to the right. And we want the door to be a lot bigger than the key. So let's tap door, add code, and here we find the magenta wens menu. We want game starts. And then from the green looks and sounds tab from the bottom of the screen, pick out a set size block. And let's type in 300%, making the door three times bigger. Now press play or the turquoise triangle at the top right. And let's see how that works. Cool, this looks good. Now what we want is for the door to animate opening when we swipe it. So let's add code to the door by tapping the gray pen at the top right of the screen. Then under your first magenta when block, tap plus new when and scroll to find is swiped right in the whens menu. There it is. And select that and see how there's a white bubble between when and is swiped right? Tap that and select door from your objects. Cool. So now when door is swiped right, it should flip so go to the red movement tab on the bottom left and pick flip. Then we want door to move to the right and left and right movement is the X axis. So select change X by also in the movement tab. And here type in 50. Cool. And let's test it. So if we swipe right door opens. So now what we want to happen is for the door to only open if you've already gotten the key. And what do we use to keep track of if you've gotten the key or not? Values. So let's go back to edit mode by tapping the gray pen and scroll down to add code to key. Tap plus new when and here in the whens menu we want is tapped. And this time select key for the bubble between when and is tapped. Okay, now we want to set value, so find the yellow values tab at the bottom of the screen, select set value, for which we need to make a new value, and let's call this has key. Cool. And once we select that, set has key to 1. You've probably seen this a lot in these videos where we set values to 0 or 1, and that's because of a convention called binary logic, where 0 equals false and 1 equals true. You can think of it as, how many keys do I have? 0? Well, then the sentence I have a key is false. But if I have one key, then the sentence I have a key is true. When we tap the key, it should disappear like you've picked it up. So let's add a set invisibility block by going to the green looks and sounds tab. Scroll to the right and let's type in 100 for 100% 100 invisible. And let's test that out. Okay, so we pick up the key and open the door. Perfect, but we need to have a way to tell the door don't open if you haven't gotten the key yet. So let's edit the door's rule, tap the gray pen, and where we've already written when the door is swiped right, we're now going to check whether has key is set to what we want before we open door. So tap below the red change X by block so it says pick a block and go into the blue control flow tab at the bottom right and select check if else. 
we're going to check if has key equals one. So select equals under conditionals. And in the first bubble, scroll to the right and pick has key from iPad's values. And in the second bubble, type in one. Cool. What we're saying is if has key does equal one, then we're going to execute our door opening code, which is flip and change x by. So scroll up and drag flip and change x by into the top part of our check once if block. And then else means if has key does not equal one, equals anything else but one, including zero, then we don't want the door to open. For now, let's just make it wiggle. So if we tap into else, we want to turn our door. Let's turn it negative 10 degrees to the left. And then let's have it turn back to the right, this time positive 10. And finally, let's have this happen a few times. So if we go to our blue control flow tab, select a repeat block, and let's have it repeat five times. And then last but not least, drag both turn blocks inside. Okay, and let's try that. So when you try and swipe the door, there we go, it wiggles a little bit, but if you get the key first, then swipe the door, now it opens. So that's the foundation of escape game. Everything from here on out is working backwards. When you play an escape game, you're presented with problems and you try to find solutions to them. But when you're designing an escape game, you start with solutions and you have to add in more problems. So let's make this key harder to get. I want to hide key behind a painting. So let's go back to edit mode, X out of here, and I want to add a new emoji. And you can pick whatever you want, but I'm going to pick this painting. We'll put it right on top of key, so it's obscuring it. And before we forget, let's rename this painting. Cool. And I want to make that a little bigger, so I'm going to add code when game starts. And I'm going to set size, so go into the green looks and sounds tab, select that, and type in 200 or two times bigger. So now I can't get to the key and the door won't open without the key. So I need a way to get the painting to move and my idea is to get the painting to move up when you swipe it. Let's go back to edit, tap plus new when, and I'm going to scroll to the right and select is swiped up. And tap between when and is swiped up to pick painting. Cool. Painting should move up, which is Y, so find Change Y by in the red movement tab. And type in 200. Then we want painting to go back down again, so select another Change Y by. And this time type in negative 200. And let's test that. Okay, if we try that out, painting swipes up, and when it swipes up, I have to tap quickly to get the key. There we go, and then the door opens. This looks great, but it's kind of hard to know whether I got the key or not. So we're going to add one of the essential parts of an escape game, the inventory. Go back to edit, and I'm going to add a text label called inventory. Okay, and I'm going to drag it to the lower left corner of the screen, and let's rename it inventory. Cool. Then I want to color the inventory area a different color so the player knows that it's different from the screen. Whenever I draw in a complicated project like this, I like to use the pencil emoji. So when there's loads of stuff on the screen when I'm editing, I can always tell that this object draws. So go ahead, add the pencil emoji. I think it's to the right here. Oops. There we go. And let's drag it over to the inventory and rename it Pencil. Great. And the first thing I'm going to do is make it invisible. So tap plus add code when game starts and select set invisibility from the green looks and sounds tab. 
and we're going to set invisibility to 100%. I want Pencil to draw across the bottom of the screen, so find Set Position from the Red Movement tab. And I'm going to set its position to the bottom corner, which is X is 0 and Y is 0. Finally, let's draw and go to the purple drawing tab and select Draw a Trail. Here you can pick the color of your choice. I'm going to pick this lavender color. And for width, type in 150. Finally, for move forward, I want to use the value of iPad's width. So scroll to the right and find width under iPad. Perfect. Now let's see how that looks. Okay, so now we have an inventory drawn and a place to put the stuff that we have. Next, we need to figure out how to place the key inside the inventory. Like most good problems, there are at least two possible solutions to this. The first is to set the key's position to the inventory when you get it. The second is to have a separate key emoji down there that hides or shows depending on whether has key equals 1 or 0. You probably know how to do the first, so I'm going to show you how to do the second. Let's add a new emoji, get another copy of key, scroll to the left, there it is, and I'm going to drag it down into the inventory area and rename it key2. Cool, and all key2 needs is two rules, so tap plus add code. And for the first rule, we want when has key equals 1. So scroll all the way to the right in the whens menu and find equals from conditionals. And we're going to scroll to find has key under iPad's values and type in 1 for the second bubble. So when has key is 1, we want key to be visible. So we'll set invisibility from the green looks and sounds tab and set that to zero. Perfect. And for the second rule, tap plus new when, we want equals again. And this time we want when has key equals zero. Okay. And finally, we want key to be invisible in this block. So again, find set invisibility from the green looks and sounds tab and this time type in 100. Perfect. So first key starts out invisible because we don't have the key yet, but when I swipe the painting up, get the key, there it is. And when I open the door, key doesn't disappear, but it should because we've used it up. So let's go back to edit and change the door swiping rule. Scroll up and find when the door is swiped right. There we go. And the first part of our check once if is when the door is opening. So when the door opens, it should take the key away. So tap beneath the red change x by block and add a set value block from the yellow values tab. And here in the first bubble, we want to pick has key. And for the second, type in zero. Great. And let's try that. So first key is invisible. We swipe up. Key is visible, open the door, invisible. Perfect. Now the only thing left to complete your escape game is some way to let the player know when he or she has won. And while we're at it, we might as well tell the player what the point of the game is too. So I'm going to add a new text object and make that the title of the game or the instructions. I'm going to write escape the room. Perfect, and I'm going to drag that to the top of the screen and rename this title. Okay, and let's see, we wanted to say you escaped when you escaped, but who's in charge of figuring out whether you've escaped or not? It's the door. So back in doors code, where we have set value has key to zero, that's the end of the game, so we're also going to set a value ending to one. Tap beneath the yellow set value block and let's go to the yellow values tab and select another set value. This time we're going to make a new value called ending. Select that and 
and set this to 1. The only thing left is to make the title's text change when the ending equals 1. So scroll down to Titles Code, find Equals under the Conditionals tab, select the ending value for the first bubble, so scroll to the right, then type in 1 in the second bubble. And then we'll set text from the green Looks and Sounds tab and type in You Escaped. Awesome, and let's test it. Can I open the door? Nope, but if I swipe the painting up, get the key, I can open the door and now I escaped. So now you have all the tools you need to make your own escape game. Make values to keep track of what you've got and what state the game is in, and then use conditionals and events to change the game's behavior based on how those other things change. Now comes my favorite part, I get to show you a walkthrough of my finished escape game. In my version, you need to first turn on the light, and you're familiar with getting the key from behind the painting, but if you open the door right away, an alligator comes and eats you. So what you need to do is instead of unlocking the door right away, turn on the light, get the key, and if you pop the balloon, scissors fall out, and then you can drag the scissors and use them to unwrap this box. And then you can open the door and the alligator eats the hamburger instead of you. I hope you liked my escape game and I can't wait to play yours. Have fun!